Tribe up. Vibe up. What it do, man? Shout out to you. See me out. My mom just chilling. CJ Battle got me dripping. CJ Battle got me dripping. Ah. Just got my dragon juice. Rocking my dragon glass. That's that obsidian stone. Ahab CJ Battle wrapped it in his enhanced copper wire, man. Hit up CJ at uh, crystaljamesjewelry.com or hit it up on the drop shop. You can hit it up 432thedrop.com. Scroll down to Crystal James Jewelry. He rewrapped my, my quartz, man, my citron. It's the citron, man. You know, if you want to know more about crystals, more about the energy, the frequency, the flow, hit up. You know, every Saturday, 5 o'clock, Tide Battle, Crystal Essentials, man, in the ether. She's dropping it, man. And CJ Battle, CrystalJamesJewelry.com, man. For the real ones, go ahead and get the flow, man. I mean, you know, we, we got to be one with our earth. We got to be one with our frequency. And it feels good to be one with you, man. We just had an incredible flow with the tribe. I'm still zoning. I'm still zoning up, zoning high. Look at me, man. I'm just zoning up, zoning in the ether. And it feels good, man. Let's get back to it, man. We're going to be rapping on the cult of Mithra. We're going to talk about the excellent new tune and the ancient love song and get clarity. It's just like these crystals, you know, our journey is for clarity. It's not for division, not for separation. But this is Drive Nation. This is tribal. And a lot of times you got different flows, different perspectives, you know what I'm saying? So it's great to go over these things, man. Um, you know, like it's the first time. A lot of us are dealing with different aspects, even if you ain't you know, into whatever, you know what I mean, at least it gives you the firepower, man, the ammo to uh, you know, not just conquer the, the robbers in your own head and the hijack, you know, in the flow, but to also, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, drop it on somebody you know so that they can get some clarity, you know what I mean, it's all about helping our family get clarity and seeing clearly with the vibe that Hawaii's giving us. Again, love to my bro, man. Chief. On Pokal, on Kapokal, <laughs> on Kapokal, my bro JG in the Bronx. Man, read it, man. This is beautiful, man. Hope you don't mind me sharing it, Chief, man. Thanks for the 432 drop gear. I was like a little kid when I opened the box. It made my day. I like you, and I own that frequency. Or I'm, I'm like you, and I own that frequency. It's coded in our DNA. We never give thanks enough to each other and i just want you to know you have brothers in arms man chief on cop cow you dog i did clan man hey how, how real is that this is my bro in the bronx that said that he's you know dropping off 100 books man i think he's sending like 50 books to caramayo man the bro spreading books around so, you know, this is out of his library, man. He's sharing it, man, making sure we got the resources because he sees that, you know, we enjoy, you know, digging. You know what I'm saying? And this is really making our brothers and sisters excited. We got scholars and educators, you know what I'm saying, all over the place. But, you know, right here is where it's coming together. You know what I'm saying? Right here is the frequency that we all are like, you know, I got all these books. I am a scholar. You know, I got the flow. But let me be in the flow with you, you know, and that's what... We appreciate the most, man. Um, the Most High is doing something incredible. Hope you got to see the tribal kickoff, man, the kickball flow. That's just a little small part, man, of, you know what I'm saying, a few of us that are gathered, when we're gathered, where we're gathered, man. And it feels good, man. We see you, V, bow. What's lost, now we found. Hey, man, it's the real ones. It's the home team, and the bro ain't playing. I got packages I ain't even opened up yet, man. I just got back to, this, to the spot, man, so... I got a package of books like this here, man, like this here. Might be something good in here, man. Smells like some drop. Oh. Got this package here, man. Just a big package of books, man. Oh, man. Can I even... Oh, oh okay. I got this one right here, man. It's another, I think it's like 50 books. Oh. Hold up. Okay. Okay, 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 oh, all right, man, woo, thanks to Chief, 
on Kapoka. Man, I hope I'm saying that right, my bro JG. In the Bronx is what I call him. And we we just vibing, man. You see me, man. I, I'm just enjoying seeing what's popping, man. You know, this, we can get busy. We can do five drops a day and just go crazy. But I'm in the flow, man. You know what I mean? To me, I'd rather take a week off and, and just let the drops marinate. You know what I'm saying? Let the folks, you know, catch up. They need to catch up because if you've been surfing the wave, you know when we go, we go. <laughs> Don't even play. You know what I'm saying? When we go, we go. You know See two, three drops a day, you know, we're going we gonna to get there, you know what I mean? So, right now, I just want to have a flow with y'all, man. I want y'all to be able to fall back. You know, if, you, if you've if seen all the, you know, drop that we dropped over here and then, then share with a friend. I mean, you know, take time just to fall back and, you know, get yourself together, man. You know what I'm saying? Get yourself signing up. It's time to apply what we know. It's not just time just to go at 100,000 miles, you know, per second, you know what I mean? We got to apply what we know. You know, what have we learned so far? If we ain't applying it, then what's it for? So this drop right here is for the application. It's for the shit. It's for the clarity. You know what I mean? You know, to be able to share, um, you know, just, uh, you know, things that just kind of, you know, blast your mind a little bit. You know, it's important to think outside, you know what I'm saying, the, the dome, you know what I mean, at the same time. You got to know what's in the dome, you know what I mean? And you get, when you take that time, you get to circulate in your own dome, maybe have a conversation with a friend, see what's in their dome, and then say, okay, this is what's necessary, you know what I'm saying? So this dry right here is what's necessary because I know we got a lot of folks, you know, in different waves and different things, even in Drop Nation. So, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's the clarity so you know where we at, you know what I mean? And so you know why we are where we are and what the Most High is doing and you know what I'm saying, how he's working within us and all that. So it's for the clarity, for the tribe. We're going to go ahead and get it, man. We digging on. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, you know, this book right here that we're jumping into is the $999 book on Amazon called The Medieval History of the Israelites by Robert Grisham. Uh, Medieval History of the Israelites, or excuse me, Medieval Empire of the Israelites. And I believe we got that in the uh, library. I believe we do, but it's a big file, so I, you know, I don't know if we. It might be even too big to put in there. <laughs> so if you don't have it in there, email me. You know what I mean? You, you don't gotta, you know, or or, or pay a thousand dollars. Go pay a thousand dollars. Go crazy. Or you know, hit me on the email. You know what I mean? Hit your boy on the email. You know what I mean? Music at four three two to drop dot com or four three two to drop at gmail. Let's go ahead and get it. All right, let's get a piece of this. Let's get a piece. Let's put it up. Uh, let's see. What is here? All right. I'm going to block y'all. It's going to go into a little bit. Medieval history of the Israelites. We're on page 388. I'm going to show you what the a few of the contents are. Alright. See the table of contents. So obviously there's some very exciting uh drop in here. And you know, we don't take nothing all, you know, whole wholeheartedly from any author, you know what I mean? But there's plenty of seeds, man, for you to dig on. Plenty of trails for you to dig on in here, man. And, I do want to go back and get the preface preface one day, but not today, not today. We're going to go right in. We got a lot to talk about, man, so let's go. All right, home team, home team, let's get him. All right, so we're going to talk about the cult of Mithras. All right, then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, this David Goliath situation. You know what I'm saying? Love to my bro, uh, Mata Zeke. Or Mata Yata Zadak. Hope I'm saying that right. Or Malak Taza. No. Malak Yata Zadak. I know I know that one was right. Malak Yata Zadak. Man, what it do? Love to my fam on IG, man. Go ahead and hit me on the drop. Uh, what's it called? DM. Drop DM, man. On the IG. If you got some drop, man. Share. Drop it in the drop chat. 432 to drop.com. Password is 123 to get through the dough. 1234 to get through the dough. Make sure you come hijack free. Let's get into this Mithras, man. Let's 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 get real, cause this is a real connection, and it's time to uh, 
step into reality. Remember, man, we got our ancient love song. We got our excellent new tune. All right. And it's, you know, right now we're separating those things because one of them is a reflection of the other, which came first, the ancient love song or the excellent new tune. You know what I mean? We got a story of Joshua, you know, so to speak, called Jesus in the New Testament. Then you got a story of Joshua, Yahshua, Yahashua, Hawashua, love Tupaco, you know, and what they call the Old Testament, which I say is not an Old Testament. Someone is putting a marker, calling something old, but the old is as new or, or newer than the new in a sense, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, we got connections with Daniel, possibly the book of Daniel being written in the 1600s. So what does that do, you know what I'm saying, to this whole story that's supposed to be taking place in, what, you know, 30 AD, you know what I'm saying? So what is that, you know what I mean? You got to put all this shit together, you know what I'm saying? Someone has cleared history, you know, pushed your history back. They got a blank white slate. Now they're writing in something, calling it new. Does it mean that the Old Testament is old? No, someone's calling it that. They're brainwashing you. You're in the mind of a hijack, you know what I'm saying? So if you're calling on Jesus, remember it's energy, frequency, vibration. Remember that you are already in... A matrix already in you know what I'm saying some 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 type of illusion because the J don't even exist. And I know you know that. I want you just to you know fall back and you know show some respect or consideration to your enemy in this case because you know they did something major to get all these nagas into this scheme, you know what I'm saying, into this fraudulent scheme. So if not this if not bringing you Jesus and bringing you an excellent new tune and, and hijacking you into an old and new dichotomy, you know what I'm saying? If they didn't do that, if they didn't give you an excellent new tune and literally cut the legs off of, of, of you <laughs> to be able to connect to your creator and give you a story about Jesus on the cross that really in the book of Acts says he was hung on a tree, does that make you forget about the reality of all of your ancestors being hung on trees so that you can take this story of this man being hung on a tree and say that he died for my sins forever yet whether you're talking about their timeline 2,000 years of suffering have gone by after this taking away of your sins situation or if you go on the uh, Anatoly Fermenko which is what the medieval uh, uh, empire the Israelites really you know nails down really good man the uh, Anatoly for the Manco chronology puts it together with this particular story and they have Jesus or this Joshua being born in 1053 1054 around that time so even then you got about a thousand years of someone supposed to be dying for your sins and you, you still got a thousand years of suffering does that make does that is that what Hawaii would do give you a human sacrifice of someone that's supposed to be his son and it still make you go through a thousand years of being lynched and hung and crucified. So when we have our Joshua, we have a story of someone who literally is leading an exodus, right? Just like Moses, you know. But Moses is past the Joshua, leads you to the promised land. Now that connects to the, the Mormon situation, the Kitsukotl situation. We know that because they call on... They still call on Jesus, but they know they're talking Joshua, and they know they're talking America, which puts them ahead of the Christians. The Christians gave us this version of the story, even in our Torah, you know what I'm saying, when we talk Torah, and even those so-called Jews that don't deal with Jesus, hey, at least they ain't teaching us that. That's the difference between, well, you know what I'm saying, be careful when you agree with your enemies, right? Because you got your enemies, so-called Christians, you know what I mean, literally giving you an excellent new tune, right? Telling you, oh, please love this Jesus and this story. He died for your sins. This Joshua, we, you should focus on that Joshua. Don't even focus on it. But then you got the so-called Jews that don't, don't even fuck with Jesus, right? They don't even fuck with him, right? So you got it. One of them is right. One of them is right, right? One person messes with this JC. One person don't, all right? One person say, well, the Mormons then say, we're going to mess with them, but this is, an, this is an indigenous American we're talking about. 
and they're connecting with the kids of Kodo and the mind, and we're going to get a little bit of Papu Vuh. So you got these kind of a three-headed situation. The Mormons seem to have it the most clear because they at least are connecting it indigenous indigenous with America and kids of Kodo and the, the Mayan, the Aztec. They're connecting that. The Nephi, they're connecting that. The Christians are just saying, screw your laws and all, all that. Rock with this Jesus who himself don't even say screw the law. So, of course, they're putting another twist, but there's levels to this Christian thing. These Christians aren't the same as those Christians, aren't the same as those Christians, and they seem to have gotten more and further and further away, yet they are still telling you to love this frequency and focus on this HaMashiach. So when they call on HaMashiach, whether they do it in the Hebrew or they say Jesus, they're still calling on an energy that was literally put together for what purpose? And what does it connect to? Meanwhile, you got the so-called Jews that don't even deal with none of that new test X, Y, and Z. They're just, you know, doing their own thing and the laws. And the difference is that they're not in the hoods trying to convert you. they just doing them. We waking up connecting our Hebrew heritage, and then we're looking at them and saying, oh, you know what? They don't even deal with Jesus. You know that? Now, what, uh, which one of them Jews is coming into the hood to teach you that? <laughs> Which one of them so-called Jews, right? Church, synagogue, say whatever you want to call. Which one of them is teaching you that? You know, we don't deal with just JC and this is how you should keep your Sabbath and this is how you keep the law. They don't teach you Negroes nothing. It's the Christians coming in force converting you Indians. So I would say be more careful about those that are force converting you into a story, into a psyche. When you start calling on the same God as them, because Jesus is God to them, and Jesus is God based on the hijack period, because you're just talking he is Zeus, because you remember there ain't no J. So if you a brother and you feel comfortable telling me, you know, Jesus this, and you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, Jesus is the Hamashiach, I just challenge you to take the J off. Because then you're going to have to answer some questions. See, it feels good when you say, when you say Jesus, it feels good, right? I mean, for them, you know what I'm saying? When they say Jesus, it feels good. It's a vibration, right? But which vibration? Is it an ancient love song or an excellent new tune? If you just take the J away, because there ain't no J. I'm going to say it again, there ain't no J. I'm going to say it again, there ain't no J. Then you either going to have to go to the Yashua's or you're going to have to go to the to the Iazusas. Now, don't just jump out of Greek because you don't like Iazus and say, well, forget that. I'm going to go to the Hebrew. No, nah, no. Nah. You, you're going to be Greek? Stick with the Greek. It's up to you if you feel like Jesus is translating from Joshua directly and this is they're the same name. and It's up to you. That's fine. Just take the J off. So instead of calling on Jesus, say, Jesus. Oh, that, that don't feel as good. You, you could try to front to yourself, but you know that don't feel so good. Why? You just took the jail. And now you're saying, Yahshua, Yahawashai, all these other names for Jesus, right? But then now you got to deal with the real Joshua. And if you think those stories are the same or they link, that's where you have to pick up and say, all right, here's the link. Because last time that I checked, Joshua's leading you to your promised land, not talking about fleeing to the mountains because the Romans are coming. Last time that I checked, you know what I'm saying, Moses is personally, you know, putting his hands on Joshua. And Joshua is personally, you know what I'm saying, actually slicing and dicing and, and making sure you got, you know, safety from the Canaanites or the giants. So he's fighting giants. We're going to talk giants. He's literally fighting giants. For your safety that's the last time i checked now when you go into this jesus whatever gospel you're going to you don't see the fighter you don't see the fighter joshua all right you don't see no talk of you being led onto your promised land by joshua it's just a bunch of talk about futuristic stuff you know what i'm saying so one is about action one's about talk and if you say well the action was the crucifixion i say there was a whole lot of action my noggin there's a whole lot of action. Here's the key question that, you know, we're going to keep asking, and it's going to be pretty much the, the, the theme, you know, of this drop right here. 
We know that Joshua is a Hamashiach, a ha breath, a, a high messenger, a messenger with high breath. You know what I'm saying? We know that Moses is a Hamashiach. We know that David is a Hamashiach. High breath, covenant, messenger. Right? So, which Hamashiach, you know, not that we call on, we don't call on nothing but our creator, but which Hamashiach should we be seeking to get closer and break the spell and break the mystery down between what happened with us and what's going to happen and how we, you know, truly walk and connect with our creator? What Hamashiach does the script say that we will search for when we return to our career? And that's where we're going to really keep that question rocking because it's not about a competition. Because Joshua's not in competition with David. So why would we put a competition between the Joshua and the David? Or the descendants, you know what I'm saying? Why would we put a competition between Moses and Joshua? None of them are in competition, so we're inventing a competition. Unless there's an actually new tune being brought to us. Now that's in competition. And we're going to get that out to Papuva. But first, I want to get into the code of Mithras, and then we'll fall back. We're going to get real, real, real cozy. You know, we're going to get real cozy. We're going to dig on these things, man. Let's go. So I am in. We are in medieval history, or excuse me, medieval empire, the Israelites. Let's get it from here on page 388. <laughs> Initially, Christians prayed not to Jesus. All right, so initially, Christians prayed not to Jesus, but to the Messiah. All right. Christians, right, because the Hebrews didn't pray to the Mashiach. They prayed to the Great Spirit, the Creator, all that. Hold on, man. Make sure I got my... Okay, cool, cool. All right, so that's initially. You got to copper up, man. Make sure you got your water. We're about to go in and get your water right now. Let's go. Fall back, fall back. We coming in hot. We coming in hot. Let's go. Feels good to be Zani. CJ got me dripping though. Hit up, man. Crystal James Jewelry, man. Support indigenous business. Drop shot. Let's go. All right. We get in from right here, man. Pause it. Read it. Again, if you want this doc, if it's not in the drop library, email me. Music at 432thedrop.com. You know, why did this book cost a thousand bucks, man? Let's go. All right, initially Christians prayed not to Jesus, but to the Messiah. And they were, if one is to translate precisely, not Christians, but Mashians, Mashians. Look, man, $1,000. All right, don't mean it's all right and accurate, but someone don't want you to read it. And there's a lot of connection. They even start connecting, um, you know what I'm saying, the death of Matthew and these characters. And it's like, you know, all these characters have some connection to reality. I mean, if Joshua do, you already know we dug on in the Preston John series. Preston John connecting to John the Baptist, which according to the new, right? John the Baptist is the cousin of this, of this Joshua here. So would Preston John be the cousin of that Joshua? You know what I'm saying? Would David be the cousin? I mean, now you really got to connect these things, you know what I'm saying? So, so they didn't pray to Jesus, but to the Messiah, to the Messiah, all right? They weren't Christians, but Messians, which connects you to the Meshika, all right? Let's go. In which connection the story of Christ the Messiah subjectively recalls the legend of Prometheus. All right, remember, that, you know, Christus, you're in the Greek uh, you know, framework, no matter who you call the Greeks, 
<laughs> the Greeks were uh, putting our people in frying pans. You know what I'm saying? So we're talking swine when we talk Greek. We're talking swine when we talk Iesus. We're talking swine when we talk excellent new tune. And this is why we got to clarify this for the tribe. Let's go. <laughs> so the story of Christ, the Messiah, recalls the legend of Prometheus, the idea of a God's self-sacrifice was spread widely. This story was not new. So don't come to me with this self-sacrifice story if it was already a very widely spread story, but you just don't like to dig on it. You take the J off, you're talking E Zeus. So if you're bold enough to call on Jesus and tell us to call you know, and, and that Jesus is our Hamashiach, then I want you to say E is Zeus is our Hamashiach. Don't skip and go into the Hebrew. You're talking Greek, just drop the J. See how it feels. And if it feels right, that's between you and Hawa. E is Zeus, is E is Zeus our Hamashiach? Whoa, that feels weird. You just took the J off. We're in the spell, we're breaking the spell together. So the idea of God's self-sacrifice was, was spread widely. However, it remained too general and therefore too abstract to be understandable by each and every one. It had to be filled with vivid details which touched the hearts of people. Now you have a story of these Gospels to do what? Touch the heart of the people. It's different. It feels different than these stories in Isaiah and Jeremiah and all that because that's just the most high going in bone, letting you know what you did wrong. Letting you know that just because you did wrong, you will choose up and Hawaii will always be there for you. And we're going to do a dismount with this, uh, you know, definitely Hijack City. He wants us to uh, throw away our creator. He's, he's, he's going to try to slander the creator and all oh, the creator of the Old Testament. Just he, he gave up on his people and, you know, he, he, he turned his back on this and that. And we know the script, so we know you got to read the entire story, man. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to get that at the end. But the main thing he's doing is connecting Jesus with Zeus, even though he's trying to just say, hey, you know, this is who you got to get behind this Jesus. But then he's also going to connect the stories and say, well, you know, this is actually Jupiter. This is actually Zeus. And this is a Christian talking. This is a Christian talking. So, you know, we, we're going to hear that and, you know, put this all together. You know what I'm saying? We don't take nobody's word for it. This is why we investigate. Don't take my word for it. Investigate. All right? We're going to talk David. We're going to talk David and Goliath. What else, man? We're going to talk Goliath in the 1100s, man. All right, man. Let's go. We got, we got, we got work to do. So the idea of God's self-sacrifice was spread widely. However, it remained too general and therefore too abstract to be understandable by each and every one. It had to be filled with vivid details. This is what these councils were doing was they took the skeleton of the reality took the reflection and filled it in with details, right? Details to do what? Get your heart, get your heart, get your spiral. So now when you say Hamashiach, the vivid details got you thinking Jesus. When I say Hamashiach, I'm thinking excellent, excellent or excuse me, ancient, ancient love song. I ain't thinking excellent new tune. I'm thinking the ancient love song. I'm thinking who did the creator tell us? That we will seek after we wake up and seek Hawa. Who will we seek? We're not picking and choosing scripture now, are we? What else does that mean to you, Jesus? Well, the Christian would say that. Oh, well, that's not David. It's talking about the descendant of David. That is Jesus. Come on, man. Come on, man. They're touching your hearts, right? They wrote you a vivid story with vivid details which touch the hearts of the people who saw around them only evil and cruelty. So now us Nagas only see around us what evil and cruelty. Black people, so-called African-Americans, we only see around us evil and cruelty. So they give us a story in that slave mentality to touch our hearts, to say, you know what, here's this loving, this is how you deal with your enemies. Y'all get your Stevie Wonder wrong, man. This is how you deal with your enemies. Come on, man, just sing to your enemies. If your enemy needs something, give it to him. Is that how David functioned? 
Oh no, but Jesus is the perfection of the law. He's perfecting with David. All the Psalms you read of David and they're not perfecting the law. You follow David's path, his lows, his high. You don't see by the end of his life a perfection of the law. You rock with Moshe and don't see how he's moving, especially being in a dungeon 10 years, king of Kush 40 years, how all this experience he's perfecting the law. You take a Jesus story as a perfection of the law. I'm sorry. Last time I checked, last time that I checked, you got Jesus at 12 years old. Now you got Jesus at 30. Some say he died at 33. And in this text, it says he died at 31. That means you only got three years to show this man perfecting the law. At 12, 30, and 31. But that's perfection of the law over the 40 years of Moses being king of Cush. Over his upbreaking, you know, overcoming, you know what I'm saying, the, the energy of this Egypt coming out of that. To... Now, in the book of Jasher, being in his 70s or something, 80s, I mean, you know what I mean? Freeing the people, freeing the children at 70, 80 years old. I think you have much more to go on when you look at someone's life as a perfection of the law. Unless someone's just telling you something, whispering in your ear that this is perfecting the law. And you're reading it and you're connecting it with all the prophets dropped. Because that's all this Jesus character is doing is quoting the prophets. Everything good and deep he's saying is coming from Ezekiel or Elijah, David, Daniel. You know what I'm saying? It's all coming from the old that you don't care about. Your Hamashiachs are now old. But this new, excellent new tune, you feeling that though. But just drop the J. Don't go to the Yahweh Shies and all that. Just drop the J because if you, if you want to be in the Jesus frequency, just drop the J. Why aren't you comfortable with Jesus? We're going to get to it. Let's go. So, and, and then a version appeared about a man who was depressed and humbled the same as everyone. And at the same time was the earthly incarnation of God. Stop. <laughs> I'm not just talking about the Jesus story. Remember, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the legend of Prometheus. Oh, you thought I was talking about Jesus? You know what I'm saying? This is where they're getting this from. We're going to tie this into the Mithras situation. Tie it into the Horus situation. This is where they're getting it from. Give your enemies some damn credit here. Because they still worship the same powers. They ain't never stopped. They worship Horus and Ra and all this. They ain't never stopped through Jesus. He is Zeus. They worship Zeus. They worship Jupiter. They've never stopped through Jesus. He is Zeus. And now you're just worried about that sacrifice or that crucifixion in which in the book of Acts says he was hung on a tree. Why do you think they don't teach heck being hung on a tree? Because that would connect to too many of you and me. Too many of you and me have been hung on a tree for you to bring me this Jesus because he's been hung on a tree. All my sins are taken away, yet sin is still the transgression of the law, huh? So wouldn't the sins be taken away after you've overcome your ability to transgress the law? Ain't that what the creator said with his new covenant? The law will be written on our hearts. Now you can't leave, man. Now you can't transgress the law. Why sacrifice your son if the people are still going to be in a state of transgressing the law for thousands of years? Being hung on trees. <laughs> What's good is that sacrifice? Oh, now we're purified? It don't look like it. Oh, because it's how we live in? Well, that means that we need to tribe up as the collective Mashiach so that we don't transgress our creator no more. It don't mean that someone a thousand or two thousand years ago sacrificed for all of us so that we can now go directly to the creator. Then what was the covenant that the Most High had with David for? 
Is that no more? Because last time that I checked, the covenant with David is forever. David is shepherd forever, right? Ezekiel 34, Ezekiel 37, David is shepherd forever. Oh, that's just gone because that's the Old Testament. That forever, Hamashiach, David, Lebna Dangle Dawit, Raja Hiraja Chola, Prester John, Fountain of Youth, Immortality, all the digging you're doing indigenously, stuff that they're looking for in your culture. To connect this immortal, even baptism with this fountain of youth, all this is already here. But we can't syncretize and say, here's Joshua, here's the real deal here, and then let's take this story too and put all that together. And then, nah, you know, there's two different frequencies. Let's get it, man, let's get it. The researcher Vladimir Ina Ivanov in our view, rightly thinks that at the heart of the version lay the story set forth by Anna Komnina in the Alexiad, the story of her father, the Emperor Alexius Komninas. Here is what she writes. All right, for Basil, a monk, Basil is king in Greek. All right, so when you hear Basil, they're referring to king all right, in Greek and governor in Hebrew or what Khan, right, was very wily in handling the imp impiety of the Bago Mills. He had 12 disciples whom he called apostles. So, don't say this is a coincidence. All I want you to see is that this story is being reflected on top of each other and this ain't no coincidence. So that once you see that, you can say, yo, what else did they flip? Did they flip the energy of this? Because even though this is benevolent Jesus, the energy, the energy that's coming, you know what I'm saying, from this story and from this situation is Matthew 28. Now I've been given all power. All power has been given to me under heaven. It's, an, it's a takeover, man. Because no prophets, Joshua, never, never would have to say nothing like that. So we know everything's been hijacked that we're reading, whether you're talking old or new. But with the old, it's a little more difficult to hijack something that, you know, you actually have artifacts and whatnot backing up. You got the Hebrew connecting with the Hebrew. And this new, new, you ain't got no Hebrew connecting with the Hebrew. All right. So it's a little more difficult to completely, you know, front on or, you know, uh, hijack these words and this, this energy. When you have others, you know, scripts and documents to back that up. It's a little different. You got to do a little more work. So, yeah, work has been done to hijack. You know, the books are all different orders and the characters and all these things are still with the R. But at the same time, this little slither, right? Because, let's see. Oh, I got my stuff running here. Hold up, man. Let's see this, man. All right, you got the Etsa 4, right? Now, this contains the New Testament, right? Where does the New Testament start? Gospel of Matthew, okay. They put Matthew right after the Maccabees. Matthew, Yahoo. All right. New Testament, Old Testament. So are we really having this discussion? Where is this getting its drop from? So you might be caught in the spell of this and say, but we got a new Messiah. Here's the story. Here's the drop. You need this to connect that. You think the Most High will let these people Taint, translate, retranslate, transliterate, hijack, connect to all other stories of hijacks just so that you can put your heart into it and say that this energy of an excellent new tune trumps your ancient love song, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let go, let go. All right, so we got Basil. Here's one example. This monk, governor, 
who was wily in handling the impiety of the Baga Mills. He had 12 disciples who he called apostles, and he also dragged about with him some female disciples, wretched men, uh, wretched women of loose habits and thoroughly bad, and he disseminated the wickedness everywhere. Quote, the evil attacked many souls like fire, and the emperor's soul could not brook, brook it. So he began investigating the heresy. He had some of the Bagamils brought to the palace and all proclaimed a certain Basil as the teacher and chief representative of the Bagamillian heresy. Of these, one Diblatius, Diblatius, who was kept in prison, and as he would not confess when questioned, he was subjected to torture and then informed against the man called Basil and the disciples he had chosen, described subsequently in the Gospels as Judas Iscariot. Okay. While not retelling all of the text, we shall mention a number of similar features in the narrations about Basil and J.C. All right, so you got the Sanhedrin, all right? You got the 12 apostles, Magdalene, the Temple of Solomon, the expulsion by Basil of the demons from it, the betrayal of Diblatius or of Judas, the unthinking Galatians referred to them, referred to later as witnesses to the execution, the impressment by Alex, Alexius Comnenus as by Pilate of church money for sanitation needs, the Shroud of Christ Scorched on Fire, Basil's Profession, Physician, The Arrival from Gal Galilee, the Territory of Modern France, A Miracle Before the Execution, an Earthquake, All right. Alexius Comnenus Pushing the Imposter and False Prophet wrote, Punishing the Imposter and False Prophet wrote the famous inscription, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, over his head not yet knowing to what consequences it might somewhat lead. So had the central figure of the new religion appeared, who did not lose, however, the closest connection, the past fates. The studies of the American scholar W. Benjamin Smith, quote, the pre-Christian Jesus, and the Polish researcher Andres, Andrzej Niemojewski, all right, who calls him God Jesus because again this is another God remember they're connected they're one you know what I mean this is what the whole schism of uh, what was it um, uh, 1054 the schism of 1054 you can look that up because now they're saying okay this is God in flesh and now you know it's all this has been you know more and more you know what I'm saying remixed or you know these were schisms these were separations and what might have been much closer, which led to much more further away, either way, you're going into the same route, the same BS, the same story, to do what? Get your heart. So now I got your heart. Now now you can't talk to your brother. Now your heart is in this excellent new tune. Now you have to call on the Creator, and every time you call on the Creator, you got to say it in the name of this Hamashiach, who you're calling his son, and this whole story, when you are his son, when you are the story, when you are the sacrifice, when you are the crucifixion, that's a big difference. If you don't see it as you, and you start seeing it as this man over here, then your whole Hamashiach, you know what I'm saying, your whole Hamashiach perspective is now whack. Because the Creator doesn't say that you're going to wake up, return to the Creator, and seek Jesus. There's not one scripture that says you're going to wake up and seek Jesus. Definitely not in the Old Testament or the Tanakh, you know what I'm saying? So there is script breaking down that you will wake up and seek David. And we're going to get that. So let's go. Because, you know, either the Creator's fronting on us or he's letting us know where to put our attention. Because when you seek something, that's where you put your intention. And that's where you overstand the intentions that separate the ancient love song and what the hijacks bringing us with this story here. Let's get it right here. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's pick, let's pick it up right here. Man. 
cult existing not only of pre-Christian Christ, the anointed sovereign, the savior, but also pre-Christian Jesus. Man, so you got a pre-Christian Christ and a pre-Christian Jesus. So when you go into this, you know, you already got stuff splitting off. Um, that is of the concrete man with such a name. So there's a concrete man. We're talking about Joshua, right? Let's go. Under these conditions, in the opinion of Arthur Drews, there was no need for the historical existence of Jesus, the myth about him, in the presence of the favorable historical climate, even without it, was spread in the broadest fashion and gave birth to the new religion. Here, the religious movement, which already had long existed in the hidden places of the sex and which now only had appeared on the public stage blazed up with a bright flame and burst forth and that's from author drew's the christ myth written in 1925 the christian cult practically coincides with the egyptian cult let's tie this together of the goddess isis its worshipers had their own morning prayers liturgies and vespers which strikingly recalled Catholic and Orthodox services. Historians describe drawings from the walls of the temples. <laughs> Quote, the resurrection of Osiris was from, from the dead after his stay of three days in the grave. He is portrayed at the point of resurrection, of rising from the grave. Alongside him stands his wife and sister Isis. Let's go. Five Egyptian base reliefs created supposedly 1,500 years before Christ telling pictures and inscriptions that a divine messenger stands before the virgin queen Matemua, Matemua and reports that she is to bear a son. It is explained in the second picture who will be the father, the sun god, Aman. Right? So you say amen in Christianity, amen. But who's the father? Aman. We're talking Aman Ra. Remember, we got the Ra, Thoth, Ma, Thothamon, Spellberry in South America. Let's go. We know this is Trill Spill. So the father would be the sun god Amon, and the royal virgin are embracing each other. This is all Egyptian. Let's go. The next reveals a sense of the previous, the immaculate conception of the divine seed. So now he's the son. He was an immaculate conception. You were just quoting, uh, you know what I'm saying, this Egyptian base relief energy the same Ra which is Zeus let's tie it in let's go we're tying it into Ra we're tying it into Mithras we're tying it into Zeus what more do you need it's not just about oh you know the story's a little hijacked no you, you, you're digging on the complete mind of a hijack digging on the actual relevance of someone who is significant who the Mormons can't even front on which they connect to Kitsukoltum or Joshua but they're not you know what I'm saying? They, they know there's a difference between what this new test KJV is bringing and what this story is. And when you connect that Jesus to the real Joshua, why do you have to call on Jesus? If you're insistent on calling on Jesus, it's because you enjoy that vibration. And if you enjoy that vibration, just try it without the J. Don't jump to the Hebrew. Just try it without the J. And if you don't enjoy that vibration when you drop the J, you might be in the mind of a hijack connecting yourself to a story, calling on a Hamashiach, that is Jesus. When you have many Hamashiachs, but which one did the Creator tell you that you're going to seek when you seek Hawa? And if you have a script that says, the Creator right here is saying that we're going to seek Jesus, or even that we're going to seek Joshua one day. No, we know that there's, you know what I'm saying, drop that Kitsukota will return. But do we have scripts saying that we're going to seek Joshua or seek Kitsukoholtu or that we're going to seek David and that David is shepherd forever? We're talking eternal shepherd, man. We're talking an eternal covenant that you're ignoring to connect to the excellent new tune versus the, the ancient love song. So when you want to throw all this to say, I got some connections, but I'm going to stay right here. That means somebody got your heart bone. That means somebody got you an excellent new tune. And this is for our whole tribe to, buy, to, to, to sign up, you know what I'm saying? To see that we all need to be unified. And that there's, you know, variations and you can go here and here. But when the ball's right out in front and it's the fourth quarter, the same time for play play when you talk Hamashiach. Hamashiach should not bring you to the New Testament in Jesus.
how Mashiach should bring you home. Indigenous home. Let's go. So we're talking the God of mine, the royal virgin, embracing each other. Let's keep going. Three figures on bent knees being the three Christian wise men greet and present them with gifts. All right. Now let's talk Mithras. Author Drew cites the picture of the ancient god Mithras, the so-called Mithraic icon. The head of Mithras, look him up, we're going to dig on it, is encircled by a halo with sun rays. So they got pictures in this drop. Again, email me, I'll, you know, I got you. And it shows Mithras and his people all with the same halos that you'll see with Jesus and his people. So this halo got much more to do with the Christianity. It connects back to this sun energy. It connects back to this Mithras sun god energy as well. We're talking these sun rays. It it hardly is accidental that some Christian icons portrayals of Christ resemble this picture around the deity's head or a halo and a circle. Let us say it like this. It is not that Jesus Christ is similar to Mithras, but that the god Mithras is one of the forms of worship to Jesus Christ. After the 11th century AD, one of the forms of worship to Jesus Christ. One of the forms of worship to Jesus Christ. So it's all one and the same thing. You can worship Jesus or Zeus this way or Amun-Ra this way, or you can worship Amun-Ra, Zeus, Jupiter that way. All right, we're not talking Joshua right now because ain't nobody worshiping Joshua. They come over here and say, oh, they, they, they worship the God kids of Godel. They don't know shit. They don't know shit about what these people over here do. But what we know is what they're bringing us and what we connected to. And when they talk Jesus Christ, they're not talking about your Joshua. They're talking Mithras. They're talking Ra. They're talking Zeus. They're talking Jupiter. Again, let us recall that Scaligarian history considers Mithras an Eastern ancient Aryan god. All right. You have some more to dig on with the Arias, right? And subsequently, an ancient Persian deity, the cult of whom was spread throughout all of Asia Minor. So this was spread throughout all of Asia Minor or Europe and all that. Regarding the far-reaching parallels between ancient Mithras, Mithraism and medieval Christianity, Arthur Jews writes, in Rome, the main sanctuary of Mithras is located at the Vatican. In the same book, this thousand dollar drop, it says the Vatican derives from Batu Khan. Batu Khan is what the grandson of Genghis. So you got the Genghis Khan invasion in the Americas, right? Which is connected to all this Joshua here, which the Mormons call Jesus, right? So Kitsukoto. So the Thothamon Spellberry, all this right here. So you have the Batu Khan and this whole invasion of Genghis Khan here. You got them setting up shop connected with the Inca. We got different drops talking about all this. So this is how we are putting this, you know, water together so that we can see ourselves. You know what I mean? So that we're not fooled by an excellent new tune. But yeah, man, this Mithras is located at the Vatican, all right? At the location of the present Cathedral of St. Peter. It was honored there together with the even earlier officially recognized Actis, Mithras Actis bears his name of Pope Father, or Khan Father, right? Let's go. So as you see, the Roman Pope is called the, Ho the Holy Father to this day, or the what? Hamashia, right? Let's go. In which connection the present Pope, like that high priest, which is a Hamashia, wears on his head a tiara or mithra, the, head is of myth the headdress of Mithras Attis, he is provided the red soldier's shoes and the myth of Mithras priest is in charge of the rock of God's keys, that is St. Peter, or his rock, and ascribes to himself the power to restrict and absolve. All power has been given to me, Matthew 28. So you got this Pope rocking the red shoes, and you know all this is coming out the bat again, and this whole story, and whatever you're reading as your canonized version in the KJV, that you're calling Hamashiach is also coming out this Batu Khan Vatican which is connected back to this Pope or Pope Father, which is connected back to the Holy Father, which is connected back to Mithras Atis or Basil. Let's go. The Archegalus corresponds to the Pope of Catholic Christianity, the Pope of Mithras Atis cult, 
the pagan pope had his whereabouts at the Vatican, considered the son as a savior and worshiped his own virgin mother of God. All right, the goddess Sibyl. All right, this is very important. Write it down. Sibel, Sibel, Sibyl, whom they usually portray sitting with her infant in her arms and who was her own Christian parallel to the Virgin Mary. So instead of Mary or Mary M, because in the Quran, they got Joshua literally being the, uh, my bad, my baby. I'm in the ether though, you know, sometimes the ether happens. Yeah, we in the ether, man. We in the ether, man. You know, don't even trip. Alright, you know, make sure y'all download the app. <laughs> Yo, man, that's that Drop City vibes, man. That's that Drop City vibes. Download the app. So, you know what I mean? You got the Sybil and Virgin Mary connection. Remember, Sybil is also with this ISIS situation, right? So, you got... Isis, Sybil, Mary, which is really derived in the concrete from Miriam. Like I was saying, the Quran got Miriam as the mother of Joshua. Or Jesus, who might be the cousin of this David or Preston John, John the Baptist, Jesus. Come on. All right. Let us recall that the Castrati worship Sybil and priest in the particular, in particular through the cutoff genitalia into her face <laughs> through the cutoff genitalia into her face the faiths were getting intertwined and getting intertwined into a single tangle right now they're intertwined this is what our our, our family's doing right this is what our brothers and sisters are doing when they're intertwining this story with the ancient love song ancient mithraism as to medieval Christianity has a teaching about purgatory, the use of aspersorium and the custom to cross oneself, that is to perform the sign of the cross, the ceremonial dress of the public servants, the performance of the liturgy in a dead language, this Latin, unknown to the people, the use of a host, uh, an alb, the wide belt, the, pontif the pontifical cap, and the like coincide completely, not a little bit, completely. This is the result of investigations of well-known scientist J. Robertson. He wrote, the Eastern gods and saviors are the brothers of Jesus Christ. Not your Joshua. We're just talking Zeus. Let's go. Let's go. So, you know, we'll read this part right here, and then we're going to get cozy. You know what I mean? We got some time to get cozy, man. Let's get to this David and Goliath. Let's talk David the Hamashiach. Let's go. The sacred meal of the Mithras cult resembles fully the Christian sacrament of communion. Both Christians and Mithraeus consider Sunday as the holy day. Both Christians celebrated the birth of Christ on the 25th of December and the worshipers of Mithras celebrated the birth of their invincible one on the 25th of December. And Zeus's birthday is the 25th of December. So even if you're not connecting Jesus and Zeus, there's clearly a connection between this is Zeus and Zeus. And Mithraeus, Atis, all right? You could, you could ignore it and say, well, you know, that's just coincidence. Twelve disciples each. Osiris, three days in the grave, raises. Now you got the birthday of all of them on December 25th. Winter solstice, the invincible one that they're calling, but you thinking that they're just referring to Moses as Joshua. You think Joshua was born on the 25th of December? It's, it's a simple thing. Do you think Joshua was born on the 25th of December? I don't think so either. You know, so somebody was. This is connecting to somebody, right? So you might not be connecting them to to that, but that is what it is. Somebody was born on the 25th of December. You know what I'm saying? So this story, completely virgin, uh, you know what I'm saying? What's it called? The uh, Immaculate Conception and all that stuff. You know, all this is already being put down already in these particular, you know, bloodlines and, you know, ancient stories, whatever you want to call them. 
but all of them are not going to your creator or your powers or your Hamashiachs. These are the saviors of them curved and written and threaded into your ancient love song and i know it smells the same i know it has a similar tinge i know you can find connections but that doesn't make it reality just take the j off and say e is zeus and tell me if that's reality for you if that's your frequency when we're talking ancient love song and like i said this is a lot more for you to dig on go ahead and email me for the drive Oh, man, I want to get all this, but I got some more stuff to get, man. I'll just say this part right here. <laughs> if one is to say to a modern Christian that Jesus Christ was hung on a tree and not crucified on a cross, he will be hurt to the depths of his soul, and naturally he would not agree with it, although he certainly is acquainted with the opinion of the apostles Peter and Paul. Here's what Peter said to the high priest of the Sanhedrin. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. That's Acts 5 and 30. And we are witnesses to all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in, Jeris in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. Pause it. Read it. Take your time, man. Pause it. Read it. Go look it up in Acts. Okay, so let's go. Who did they hang on a tree? I mean, did that take your sins away? Or are you still transgressing? Are you still transgressing? Are you still putting the power before your power? Let's go. Let's go. First Peter says, He bore, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. The apostle Paul confirms and when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. Galatians 3 says, I mean, that was just Acts 13. Galatians 3 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now the law is a curse. Excellent new tomb, right? You can't love the law and call it a curse. Either you don't see clearly or you see clearly. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree. Well, I guess we've been mighty cursed. <sighs> Today it is acceptable to think the expressions crucified on a cross and hung on a tree are equivalents in as much as the cross was wooden. But even if one is to admit that the cross and the tree are, the, are one and the same, then crucified and hung are different things all the same, right? Is crucified the same as being hung? I mean, hey, you know, I guess being shot is being crucified then, right? Straight up, straight up. Uh, they talked about the halos, you know what I'm saying? In the cult of Mithras, the halos, and here you go, you know. And the book is beautiful color, but, you know, the PDF, you know. But you see the halos, right? So these are not uh, original to Christianity or jesus right but this is mithraeus mithraeus oh man let's go there was one more uh you know talking about the dating let's see if we can find it right quick and i encourage you to get all this dry for real for real Breaks down the Nazareth, the Nazarenes, I'm on page uh, 397. It says, after the demarcation of Judaism and Christianity, Jews began to call all Christians Nazori and the Nazorene heresy. It says, but this still isn't everything. It is a question above all of the Gnostic training of the Nazori about their notion of purity and about the notion of Christ where which were set forth in detail in one of the previous chapters. This is why Christ is, quote, pure, the pagan postulate, crosses into modern Christianity without the slightest changes. It only is treated another way. So in other words, it's saying, when we go back, it says, uh, Nazori to this day, that is the pure. So pure and Nazori are literally, you know, synonymous. So it doesn't mean that he comes from Nazareth. 
Again, it says, however, the whole secret is the fact that Nazori and Nazarene, in fact, in ancient Hebrew, mean holy, pure. So if you're a Nazarene, that just means that you're pure. It is not referring to a place called Nazareth and not the fact that he is from the city of Nazareth by birth. Such a city simply did not exist in the legendary time of Jesus. Instead, different personages or yeah, personages of Judaic legends were called Nazori. They were called Nazori because of the purity. That's just a side note. You know, when we talk about the Nazarenes, it's not just a place. And here we're going to get the, uh, what they talk about, the timeline, man. Let's get this and let's get cozy. A lot of drop, man. All right, so we, we, we kicking it, man, in the uh, 1100s. You know, we kicking it in the 1100s. And specifically, we're going to kick it right around the mid-1100s. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. We're going to get more. It says, the result was this. The calendar conditions of the resurrections were, refilled, were fulfilled only once in 1095 A.D., once in 11 centuries, 1095 A.D. Here it says, Christ's birth belongs thus approximately to 1064 A.D. Pause it. Why this book costs a thousand bucks? Because maybe there's something that you can put together. Maybe there's some drop in here. Maybe, maybe. 1064 AD, as we know, in the year of Christ's birth, a new star blazed up, which we know was a dragon. And 31 years later, in the resurrection, the year of the resurrection, there was a full solar eclipse. Church sources speak, clearly speak in particular about a solar eclipse in connection with Christ's resurrection. All right, so it goes into it. So he has his birth, and then 31 years later, the year of the resurrection, letting you know that he wasn't 33, he was 31. If you want to put this story and try to tie it into anything, uh, he was 31. And this is just with the, you know, astronomical connections that they're making here that you can dig on, you know, you can dig on the drop if you're willing, if you're willing. So 31 years instead of 33. That's interesting because most people would just say 30, uh, 33. It says, as Anatoly Formenko discovered, there are parallels with the gospel in the biography of Pope Gregory VII, who died supposedly in 1085. He also showed that in many chronicles in 1054 A.D., which is the so-called fundamental shift of 1,053 years in the chronology is implied as year one in accordance with Christ's birth. This means that the medieval chronicers often dated the birth of Christ as 1054 or 1053 in particular. Now you got to choose your Joshua. And before you tie with the story of Mithras or the story of Amun-Ra, or the story of Zeus, you're going to have to connect it with the Papa Va. You're going to have to connect it with Kitsukoda, which is what the Mormons have done, your indigenous connection. And you're going to say, is this the same frequency? Turn the other cheek. You know, give to your enemies this. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. All power has been given to me. Oh, oh no, no, well, th th that's just added stuff. But what about this? Come on, bro. Someone's taking your heart bone. Someone's someone's creating a very heart-filled story for you to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, Jesus, go. He's now sacrificed for me. That's my Joshua, is it? Then drop the J. Call him Jesus. Or call him Joshua. But even you know in your heart, you're talking about somebody different. Those are his words. They might be reflections, you know what I'm saying? I asked the bro, I said, so yeah, you know, 
Joshua, you know, where where are his words? It seems like they they probably took a lot of Joshua's words to thread in that needle to put that story together. But does that make it reality? Just drop the J if you think it does. Because you might still be talking to Zeus, connecting it with this virgin, immaculate conception, and all this Zeus story. December 25th, Mithraeus at T story. Excellent new to him. Let's go. Let's go quickly, man. So we got this 1054 situation. I want, you know, just, just keep your mind on the 1100s. Keep your mind on the 11th, 12th century because a lot of this seems to be connecting it, man. And from that, from that, man, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can get a little cozy here, man, because, you know, we, don't, we got a nice little dismount. This dismount is going in, bone man. This dismount is going in. All right, all right cool. Let's see if we good here. All right, all right, let's go, let's go into the into the drop station, man. Into the ether. All right, let me make sure you set your way. Let me scoot this on here. Okay, scoot that over here. All right. All right, cool, man. I think we're good. All right, I think we good. I think we good. We good? Okay. okay. Wow, we made it. We made it. All right, let me make sure we got our juice. All right. Make sure we all juiced up. <laughs> Why? All right, man, we in the ether. Enjoy the drop, drop, chatter. Chat, 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 chatter. Hey, hi, man, to all the home team. Renata's in the building. Dawee's in the building. My man, Teku, Tekun Sai's in the building, man. Phoenix, what it do? Nadi, man, Copper Kai, Yosef, the real, Zion Train. Uh, it goes on and on in the ether, man. You know, we got that battle time. That battle time, we in battle time right now, and we in battle time right now man hey hi all right let's get it let's go let's go so you know we're talking david the mashiach we're talking david and goliath this is some interesting drop that we see right here man love to our bro malak yataza doc man he's digging around on this uh on this goliath and you know he went to blogworldmysteries.com and over here you know it talks about these giants man all right, let's see if we can get it bigger. I think I already clicked it. All right. Present day modern man, which averages six feet tall or several inches or more. All right, plus or minus. All right, so they're talking about certain, uh, you know, skeletons or, you know, archaeology coming up around this stuff. You got a 15 foot giant. Hold on, man. Let me get the. Uh, Story, put this on. First, he dropped this. All right, so this is the destruction of thousands of giant human skeletons. Go ahead and dig on it, pull up the link so you know what we're talking about. The Smithsonian admits to destruction of thousands of giant human skeletons early 1900s. The United States Supreme Court ruling has forced the Smithsonian to release classified papers dating from the early 1900s that proves. The organization was involved in a major historical cover-up, evidence showing giant human remains in the tens of thousands, man. Tens of thousands, man. Tens of thousands, man. How many giants are they covering up? Man? What else are they covering up? Your swords, all kind of American artifacts, historical cover-up evidence showing giant human remains in the tens of thousands have been uncovered all across America. And were ordered to be destroyed by high-level administrators to protect the mainstream chronology. We're just talking Anatoly Fomenko, Scaliger Patavius, of human evolution at that time. So they're trying to say evolution, evolution, yada, yada, yada. What else are they covering up? If they're covering up the giants, they're covering up the, the dragons or the dinos, right? The allegations stem from the American Institution of Alternate Ar Archaeology, AIAA that the Smithsonian Institution had destroyed thousands of giant human remains during the early 1900s 
was not taken lightly by the Smithsonian, who responded by suing the organization for defamation and trying to damage the reputation of the 168-year-old institution. During the court case, new elements were brought up to light as several Smithsonian whistleblowers admitted to the existence of documents that allege, allegedly proved the destruction of tens of thousands of human skeletons reaching between 6 feet to 12 feet in height, a reality mainstream archaeology cannot admit to for different reasons, claims the AIAA. All right. He says there has been a major cover-up by the Western Archaeological Institution since the early 1900s to make us believe that America was first colonized by Asian people migrating from the Bering Strait 15,000 years ago, where in fact there are hundreds of thousands of burial mounds all over America which the natives claim were there a long time before them. Not us, but the hijacks are saying that. And that show traces of highly developed civilization, complex use of metal alloys, and where giant human skeleton remains are frequently found, but still go unreported to the media and news outlets. Okay, now we got some backstory. So when we look at this right here, all right, let's scroll down. These are all, you know, different examples of what they're finding. Here it says D. Goliath was about nine feet plus or minus a few inches. First Samuel 17:4 late 11th century then you got King Og spoken up in Deuteronomy 3 whose iron bedstead was approximately 14 feet tall 6 feet wide King Og was at least 12 feet tall yet some claim 18 let's go over here so we got some more all right more David and Goliath drop so these are all you know, this 23-foot-tall skeleton is found in 1456. This this one here is found in 1613. All right. So they're putting some dates on some of the stuff being found. Now they say David or D. Goliath was about 9 feet, right? That's what First Samuel 17 said. Why are they making this connection? And why are they putting it in the late 11th century? Are they saying they just found it in the late 11th century? Are they saying that it is dated to the 11th century? All right. The bro, uh, Malik, man, this is major, bro, because this gets us into this. Let's go right quick. David and Goliath. A champion named Goliath who was from Gath. Gath. All right. This is uh, 1 Samuel 17. Came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits in span. All right, which breaks down to. Let me click that little link right here. That is about nine feet nine inches, or about three meters. Nine feet nine inches. What did it say over here? That this D Goliath skeleton is about nine feet plus or minus a few inches. All right, and they're connecting it with First Samuel seventeen late 11th century so if it was found in the late 11th century you know who's to know who's to show where you know how recent that was maybe it was found right away you know what i mean very interesting stuff man so good you know you got that link so we're just talking david and goliath all right man so this whole time we've been talking david right we've been talking you know hamashiach and we're just connecting this ancient love song in this excellent new tomb. All right, we got the the selling of Samuel, selling of Joseph, you know, talking about the ancient love song, an excellent new tomb. You know I mean, right quick, let's see if we can actually. Selling of Joseph. What's my man's name? Uh, let's just see. Selling of Joseph, Samuel Seawall is what we need. Let's get it right here. Samuel Seawall. That's the whole thing. All right, so this was uh, written about the 1700s. Love to let us find the truth who actually dropped this first. Got us digging, man. Got us digging. Uh, that's not the whole thing. Let's see.
1700. dig on this one here if we can get it bigger let's see yeah man so I'm gonna drop this so you can check it out and here it breaks down this this love song action man Get it bigger. Here we go. So it is almost, it is most certain that all men, as they are the sons of Adam, are coheres and have equal rights unto liberty. All right, so he's over here. As a slave abolitionist telling man this ain't right what you're doing to these people. Now he says what? And our coheres and have rights unto liberty and all other outward comforts of life. God has given them the earth with all their commodities unto the sons of Adam. He hath made one blood all nations of men for to dwell for all the face of the earth and have determined the times where appointed and the boundaries of habitation We're talking about our boundaries that they should seek Hawa for as much then as we are the offspring of God now although the title given by the last Adam who's who? Noah, last Adam, let's go doth infinitely better men's estate respecting God and himself and grants them a most beneficial and inviolable lease under the broad seal of heaven in other words the most highest protecting these people right here in the americas he's talking about the americas he's talking about the seeds of adam here who were born who were before only tenants at will yet through the indulgence of god for our first parents after the fall the outer estate of all and every uh and every of the children remains the same as to one another let's find this uh Ancient love song. Cham. I see a cham drop. The mentioning of cham. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. Here we go. All right, so as the Israelites were to carry it one towards another, and for men obstinately to persist in holding their neighbors and brethren under the rigor of perpetual bondage, right? Papu boo. Perpetual bondage seems to be no prosper way, no proper way of gaining assurance that God has given them spiritual freedom. Our blessed Savior has altered the measures of the ancient love song and set it to a most excellent new tune. Wait, wait, wait. Our blessed Savior. Who's that? God expects Christians should be of a more 
ingenuous, ingenuous and benign frame of spirit, Christians should carry it to all the world. Our blessed Savior has altered the measures of the ancient love song. If you don't believe your enemy has done this or done something to this measure, has altered the measure of your 432 ancient love song and gave you that 440 chaos that now divides and separates. As soon as you bring in Jesus, there's division. God of war is a warring frequency. Zeus is a warring frequency. Yeah, I know it's threaded through your ancient love song, but it's not your ancient love song, nor would you find it indigenously and set it to a most excellent new tune. If you don't think that you're digging on this new tune when you talk about this blessed Savior that you're calling Hamashiach, if you're calling on the same blessed Savior that they're calling in the same name and the same frequency, you might be in the frequency of the excellent new tune. You might feel the, the uh, you know, uh, lack of clarity all of a sudden. It's in a, it's, it's a, it's a new tune. It's function that way, which all ought to be ambitious of learning. So even though he's speaking for the abolition of, the abolishing of slavery on these people. <laughs> He's still telling you that you need to go after their blessed Savior who has given you, who has altered the measure of the ancient love song and set it to a most excellent new tune. Now it says, these Ethiopians, he's talking about Americans right here, letting you know this is Ethiopia. These Ethiopians, as black as they are, seeing they are the sons and daughters of the first Adam, the brethren and sisters of the last Adam, and the offspring of God, they ought to be treated with the respect agreeable because you've taken away, you've altered the measures of their ancient love song. Matter of fact, Jesus, their blessed Savior, has altered the measures of our ancient love song. So don't bring us ancient people, Jesus. We have Joshua, we got it. We, we were led to the promised land by Joshua, we got that. And now, as the Most High is bringing us, you know, back into unity. Now we got our unity back. Now we can answer the question that we've been asking this whole time. Who did the Most High say after we seek Hawa, after we are seeking our Creator? Who did the Most High say? Which Hamashiach should we be seeking? Seeking means that you're giving it your attention your energy your vibration should you give it to their blessed savior who has altered the measures of the ancient love song and set it to a most excellent new tune do you trust that new tune hosea 3 and 4 lets you know that the children of israel shall abide many days without a king without a prince without a sacrifice without an image all this time my people but what happens afterwards shall the children of israel return and seek Hawa, your power, and David, your king. And you shall not fear, but you shall respect. You shall come to the Most High with trembling and the goodness in the latter days. We're talking the latter days prophecy that you'll return to Hawa and seek the Creator and David. Not Jesus, not Joshua, not Moses, but you're going to seek the Creator and David. Why? Because then you'll find your priesthood. Then you'll find the lineage and the links in between the timelines to wake up out of your spell in the what? Latter days. Don't throw this away for a Savior that's bringing you an excellent new tune and altering or hijacking your ancient love song. Oh, we all should be ambitious of learning this excellent new tune. I think that's Hijack City. I think the story of this Jesus is Hijack City. And I think in your latter days, you should not be giving that your energy or calling all that energy or seeking that energy to break it all down for your brothers and sisters that are Indians, but you should be seeking what's here for them forever. David, their king. We're just talking David. We're just talking to Papuva. 
Hold on, man. We're just talking to Papa Uva, man. We might need to get some war drums, man. We're just talking to Papa Uva. Let go, man. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. We're just talking to Papa Uva. It's dismount season. Y'all been digging on it. It's dismount season, man. Let's go. Wow. We just talking pop of love. We just talking Framer and Shaper. We just talking the excellent new tune and the ancient love song. This you can definitely download in the drop library, and I'm going to leave the link as well. So you got that. And the other one, email me, man. We're talking Friar Domenico de Viso in 1555, and he's very important, man, for archaic and non-Mayan loanwords, which are no longer used by modern quiches. Quiche means the root, the root, the root people. I have relied on dictionaries, grammars, and the theological treatises prepared by Spanish priests in the early colonial period, principally those compiled by Friar Domenico de Viso. So he's very important in connecting this indigenous you know, flow, you know what I mean, and he also keeps it quite true, let's go ahead and go to, uh, let's go to page 48, you know, this is how it starts in the Papu Va, this is the sacred text of the quiche of the root people, and this is what we've been connected, this is the beginning of the ancient traditions of this place called quiche, here we shall write, we shall begin to tell the ancient stories of the beginning, the origin of all that was done in the city dale of the quiche among the people of the quiche nation. Managas. The word quiche is root. Root is used here to describe the beginning or foundation of the author's words concerning the history of the quiche people. The subsequent narrative is thus seen as growing like a plant from its root. Wow, how deep is that? Let's just talk. Let's let, let's talk Friar Domenico de Vicio. Let's talk Framer and Shaper. Here we shall gather the manifestations, the declarations, the accounting of the sowing, the, the account of the sowing and the dawning by the Framer and the Shaper. This is what they found here, my people. Not an excellent new tune, not a blessed savior, but your mother and your father, period. In all your Hamashiachs, including David, their only function is to lead you to the water, to your framer and your shaper. Not to be called on, not so that every time you mention the Creator, you got to say in the name of the Hamashiach, when you know you're talking Jesus, which is not indigenous to us. We're going we're gonna to finish that dismount up. But when we talk Joshua or Kitsukoto, now you're talking a different frequency. You're talking an ancient love song. Talking action, you're talking action of of fighting in the wars necessary to get your land, to bring you to your land, and none of this is Jesus's frequency at all, nor is it mentioned in his story at all. So one thing cannot be a continuation of the other at all, especially when one story is connecting directly to Mithraeus, Atis, Amon. Thoth, Ra, Zeus, December 25th, December 25th, December 25th. So when we talk framer and shaper, we're talking she who has born children and he who has begotten sons as they are called, Hanupu Pasam, Hanupu Coyote, Great White Bakari, Koti, Sovereign, Kitsu, Serpent, or Dragon, Kitsu Kooto. This is where his name derives as Joshua is connected to this Kitsu, this lofty cloud force, we're in the clouds, right? 
heart of lake, heart of sea, creator of the greener, mama, framer, and your shaper, creator of the blue sky, who says, with my right hand, I beat it out, I met it out the, the expanse of the sky, I beat it out, raqwa, raqwa is the Hebrew word, to beat something out, to met it out, raqwa, so he beat out the sky, he met it out the firmament, your father, your shaper, your mother is the creator of the green earth, as they are called. Now, we're just talking mother and father. We got all this before. Well, let's just get this piece right here. So we're talking framer. Refers to one who makes something by putting things together. That's your mama, right? Like a meal, right? Like a meal from various ingredients. Wisdom. You got your shaper refers to one who makes something by modeling or molding, modeling pottery from clay. I made you out of the earth, the clay, or a sculpture from carved stone, thus giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance. The framer and the shaper are the most frequently mentioned gods involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. So this is the power of the what? Of the ancient love song. Did you need a a altering? Who altered this? Who altered your frame and your shaper? Your, your ancient love song. Our blessed Savior. Oh, we're back to Jesus again. Altered the measures of the ancient love song. Well, we're talking those who are putting in this syncretized version to connect to our Joshua of the ancient love song and set it to an excellent new tune. But only one Hamashiach is who you're seeking when you return to Hawa. Seek Hawa and David, their king, their Hakan, their Hamashiach. And then you're going to respect the Creator and the goodness in the latter days, man. They put the fear spell in it. We're talking English, right? Latter days. King Khan. King Kong, Hakan, David, Prester John, Priest King. That's who you're seeking when you connect to Hawa. You seek your priesthood, not Joshua, not Jesus. We're just talking Papa Buck. <laughs> Alright, man. Alright, man. It's been a long week. I've been chilling with my tribe. I've been falling back. But this is a must. This is what we must be digging on. So that we are clear. Framer, shaper. Alright. The framer and the shaper are the most frequently mentioned powers involved in creation. Their names imply that the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter already existed rather than conjuring something out of nothing. This pair of powers, mama and daddy, right? Wisdom, our father, our mother, was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, the hijack, Father Domenico de Vicio that we just dug on, used their quiche names, root names, 